Colours are important. And what defines your colours inside your photography is the colour space you shoot in. But what should you shoot in and what is the ideal colour space? You've probably seen settings inside your editing software like sRGB, Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB and even CMYK. But what do they mean and why do they matter when it comes to your photography? And I'm going to start right now. First off, a colour space is like a box that defines the range of colours your image can contain. This range is called your colour gamut. Some colour spaces are like small boxes and others are genuinely massive. So choosing the right one is critical for how your images will look on screen but also in print. So let's have a look at the current range of colour spaces available for photographers. Let's start with the most common colour space currently available, sRGB. sRGB is an abbreviation for standard red, green, blue. It's the result of a 1996 collaboration between HP and Microsoft, and it was designed to work with the emerging World Wide Web, as well as with computer monitors, as well as colour printers. As the name indicates, this colour space profile was intended to become the standard colour space, especially at a time when more people were acquiring personal computers for their home. Well, right now, you can get a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 3 processor, plus all of this for just $7.99. And more people were utilising the internet for the very first time. This process did not take long, and soon after the introduction, sRGB became the default profile for many people. It's the smallest colour space, but it's a global standard for the web and most internet devices. Next up, we have Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB is a colour space that was developed by Adobe Systems, and it was introduced in 1998, shortly after sRGB, and it was created as a direct competitor. Adobe RGB is designed to work in combination with Adobe Photoshop's range of complex colour features. In general, Adobe RGB can be considered more of an advanced colour space. It's often preferred by those who work in the digital arts and have a more intricate colour management need. It includes more greens and more cyans than sRGB, making it more ideal for photographers who print their work or have a higher colour accuracy need, especially in post-processing. And finally, there's CMYK. CMYK stands for Cyan, Magenta, Yellow and Black. And it's not a colour space for screens, but for print. It's much smaller than the others and uses Cyan, Yellow, Magenta and Black inks. You'll have to convert into CMYK when preparing files for professional printing. So, as a photographer, what colour space should you use? Well, to truly understand what colour space is right for you, we need to talk about why Adobe RGB was created. And it's important to understand the CMYK model as well as the RGB colour model. The absence of any red, green or blue values in RGB model results in black while the maximum value of all three of these colours, red, green and blue, results in white. With the CMYK model though, this works the opposite way. This is because paper is white, so the white is the default state, while full combination of all three of these colours, cyan, yellow, magenta and black, creates black ink. One of the biggest reasons behind creating the Adobe RGB colour space was the desire to bridge the gap between RGB and CMYK colour models. Adobe RGB improves the gamut range of sRGB, meaning it can achieve more of the colours that are achievable through CMYK printing, yet the Adobe RGB colour space still utilises the RGB primary colours on a monitor. Adobe RGB is around about 35% larger than sRGB. If you have a look at this diagram, you can see how sRGB doesn't cover the full range of colours that CMYK offer, but Adobe RGB does, meaning the colours that you see on screen when you're using Adobe RGB are going to look roughly the same when you go ahead and print them. 
But it isn't just as simple as Adobe RGB is better. With sRGB, the main plus points are the fact that it's a standard color space profile across the web and probably the most common color space profile in general. This results in a simplified workflow that makes it the best option for people with just a basic creative need or anyone that's wanting to ensure color consistency across all devices. The main advantage to Adobe RGB is the broader range of colors available. This really helps when producing a greater degree of color accuracy with printed works. Adobe RGB, however, is not the standard color space profile for the web. Therefore, if you're taking photos using Adobe RGB settings and you want to edit them and upload them to the internet, there may be additional steps. Otherwise, your colors may not be displayed across all of devices consistency. This means Adobe RGB is more accurate, but also more complicated to work with, which means it's not necessarily great if you don't have a creative background. What you need to keep in mind though throughout this discussion is although Adobe RGB results in a more complicated workflow, it does provide more flexibility in switching profiles thanks to the wider range in colors. The photograph taken in Adobe RGB mode can easily be converted into sRGB. But by contrast, because sRGB utilizes a simpler color space, sRGB photographs can't easily be converted into Adobe RGB. So if you're a photographer in the field and aren't sure on how you want to display your photos later, you might want to start with Adobe RGB. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys want to support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.